First of all, hi, thanks for tuning in. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about backlash in the threads, and especially in these um, screw threads that we have on these um, 3018 uh, CNCs that come from either factory stock or uh, these ones are just carried over from factory stock. Um, so they do have a bit of a backlash problem, even though they are fitted with backlash nuts um, like these ones that uh, I'm showing now. So this is kind of the basic um, backlash system. Um, these work great if um, there's no load on the on the thread. However, um, this spring here is very easy to overcome, and actually you might as well not not bother with the with the backlash mechanism at all. So what is backlash? Well, it's effectively um, the sort of play in the thread where the nut can move backwards and forwards in the, on the thread. Only, only a few tenths of a millimetre um, or so, but that's enough uh, to cause um, some defects to appear when you're using the CNC. For a 3D printer they'd be um, these would be perfect for 3D printers or um, things like that where uh, there is no real load on the head and the spring pressure is enough to um, to keep the backlash out of the system. So how are we going to deal with it? Well I'm going to try something today hopefully um, which doesn't involve um, swapping everything over to ball screws um, and that is we're going to replace the um, existing uh, nuts or printed part that I uh, put in here initially to hold um, print quality is not particularly great on this but it doesn't really matter it's going it's going in the back um, I think if I was going to design this again I'd probably make it a little bit different I'd probably make it flat straight across so it's easier to print um, let's put it on let's give it a go just for information these types of um, backlash nuts you can actually get them uh, from AliExpress and other sources as well, like this one, um, which might be a bit in, easier to to use. Um, they're the same thing. Um, they, you know, basically use the grub screw at the bottom there and the and the nut to uh, um, adjust out any backlash. Um, if you can't three D print it, then uh, this might be a good option. Okay, so you see here I'm just using the original um, backlash nut and then we're going to fit the collar over the top of it uh, and then fit the two little screws, retaining screws. So this is going to actually compress the um, two nuts together onto the shaft um, and we can then later adjust these two screws. So I'm just putting the first one in now uh, and that will give us um, you know, a, a, an adjuster to be able to adjust very finely the um, the amount of um, pressure that we put onto the onto the shaft and ultimately that will remove all of the backlash we've left the spring in there that just helps just to keep a bit of pressure against this collar um, but otherwise it doesn't really have much use but there you go you see that they're assembled there and then we can just simply fit that onto the shaft and then once it's on the shaft we'll, uh, we'll adjust that up So tightening up wise, um, just just a slight difference. I've just added some um, uh, lock nuts on here just to make sure these stay in place because the pressure on them actually isn't very isn't a lot. And what we should be able to do, you can see that this free kind of falls by itself, and we want to just adjust these up just so that sort of free fall stops, and then we know we've got absolutely no play left in here. So I'm just going to slightly tighten these up. Okay, that's that one. Probably a little bit too much. I say it's very, very soft amounts of adjustment here. Try the top one. There we go. It's just on the brink of falling by itself. OK, 
Okay, so now we can tighten up the um, lock screws. Perfect. So that's now got zero backlash and it's only just gripping so we're not going to do any adverse wear onto the brass um, nut there. Reassemble this part uh, and then we'll give it a test. Okay, so ready for the first test cut. We'll uh, get it up and running and uh, we'll see what happens. So let's uh, get the spindle running. I have the spindle running quite slow for uh, acrylic with quite a high cut rate of about seven to 800 millimeters per minute. Um, So there's the, the piece that we cut out. Um, I've done no clean up at all on the edges, apart from just get rid of all of the, the chips that have been cut off. Um, and the edges are really, really nice, really square. You can't probably can't really see it on camera, but um, especially these edges on the end, which is actually where we've where we fitted the, the nuts, which will control that uh, movement and along there. Um, yeah, really pleased with that no binding of the shaft and uh, there's absolutely no play at all in the uh, in the motor so uh, the next challenge is uh, can I put one in there as well and maybe even in in this piece um, as well going forward although this one's slightly less important because it's always pressing in the same direction um, but obviously these ones can be moving in either direction um, left or right you know backwards or forwards so yeah Simple cut, but um, very, very pleased. Um, I'll best get creating. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>